Okay, so the idea for this video came when I was scrolling through LinkedIn and found this. Hi everyone, my name is Mithun. Today I would like to show a project. So I have inserted a reprogrammable chip inside my hand. As you can see, it is visible here. You can see right, right now there is no key ignition system here. So you can, no, there is no key knob here. I have inserted a microcontroller under this seat. And this is a switch to switch on that. So I would like to show you how to switch on this bike now. So I just have to switch on the computers. Right now the bike is not on. I just have to tap my hand. See, right now it is authenticated. Not just that, Mithun even uses his hand to unlock his computer, share his Instagram account and even unlock the doors to his office. Very interesting, right? So what you saw is called biohacking. So basically you can purchase these RFID tags from the internet and it comes with a syringe and an RFID capsule inside it. So this capsule is injected between your index and thumb finger and acts like any other NFC or RFID tag. But this is where I got a lot of questions. Is this even legal in India? Is it safe? Is it medically approved? Can a person wearing this pass through an airport security scanner or even get an MRI? Let's find the answers to all these questions. This is Ashwant and you're watching Circuit Digest. Okay, first we connected with Mithun, the person whom you saw at the starting of this video. Let's know his experience of having an implant and living with one. Here is our conversation. So the first thing I want to ask about this RFID chip implant is, how did you do this? So it's not like you go to a nearby shop and you know buy it. So how did the whole process go for you? So, so actually this happened long back when I was, I was exploring something regarding this Arduino and then that came across uh, RFID. And later I realized there's something in, uh, named as RFID implant where they implant it with uh, animals. I don't know, somehow I came across a website named dangerousthings.com mm -hmm. and uh, I, I did an ample amount of research on it and then I somehow I saved some money and then I placed the order, I got it and then I consulted few doctors mm -hmm. and uh, doctors to implant this and the doctors are like no, had no clue about it and they didn't want to take any risk on that. Mm -hmm. So and then I came to a conclusion that I have to do it on myself. Uh, there are very few people who are done by themselves. Okay. So I read that and took the rest. Yeah, I did, inserted myself. So what do you do next? How do you uh, program your RFID tags or how do you read the data out of it? It is called Proxmark 3. So basically we can play around with all the RFID frequencies here. Mm -hmm. So I just like barely uh, scratched all the uh, features of this, maybe like 10% of it. So with this I can program anything. I can uh, take any data from the any RFID device or one mm -hmm. tags. So this I programmed it. And uh, for the uh, I be, uh, and also in the video I have uh, you will, uh, you have watched where I can launch a YouTube channel uh, Instagram ch uh, ID. For that there are many other uh, applications where we can sim uh, uh, program these uh, NF uh, NFC tags. So I use the normal app for uh, these IDs. Why use this? It's very simple to be honest. Like it's a uh, open source uh, repository. You can just go through that. So, uh, Mithun, in your video, you showed that you were able to unlock the bike, open an Instagram channel, and even unlock the doors to your office. So, mm -hmm. how that is happening with the same RFID tag, or do you have to reprogram it for a specific... Well, it's same. I still don't understand. Like, your uh, authentication for your bike might be different from your authentication for your office door. And office, I use the right hand. Okay. Bike is left hand. Okay. Well, uh, I can do the same thing. Maybe uh, suppose if I have only one RFID tag, mm -hmm. so I uh, office I cannot change the RFID tag. So hence I, I have to copy the data whatever is in my access card and copy and then put it in my hand. But right. later I can the same data in the bike so, uh, as an authentication. So I can still use it in one hand. Uh, you told it's been two years since you have had this implant. So. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you would specifically mention as a disadvantage, like this thing bugs sometimes, anything like that? There's no disadvantage, like it worked every time, but maybe the range range isn't that strong. Sometimes, oh. uh, like this chip, I have uh, I use my left hand to insert it, and so I kind of messed it up. Okay. But this is a very, uh, very proper situation, uh, location. Uh, 
Okay. But sometimes I have to orient my hand properly to get the proper signal. So yeah. right now I'm got, I got used to it, so I know how to position it. But this hand it works always like it's right above, uh, very uh, in the surface of my skin. Actually, I don't know what it's called though. Mm -hmm. Understood. Understood. So I I'll have issues with the range. This looks very interesting, right? It does give a cyborg vibe and seems to be very futuristic. But is it safe? To answer this question, we got in touch with Dr. Vishal Mishra, who has been practicing medicine in New Delhi. Here is a conversation. So, yeah, Vishal, my question is about can this RFID chip implants be self-administered? Like these kind of syringes along with the RFID tag is readily available off the shelf from a market. Anyone can buy it. So as a doctor, what is your advice? Can this be self-administered? Yeah, so first of all, thank you, Ashwin, for giving me this opportunity. And I'll try to bring the tidbits from my experiences as a physician who's worked on in various uh, diverse departments. Uh, the mere fact that you have showed me this syringe and it is widely accessible and the kind of syringe, it seems to be slightly complicated than uh, the IV syringes that we use on a regular basis. And the fact that people are already using it as a, a practice of self-administration is scary. So uh, if you ask me, about self-administration, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I see cases in wards, casualties, and emergency departments on every day where people who are really trained, you know, who do it on everyday basis, they sometimes make mistakes. And we have to bring a lot of people from different teams, such as critical care and anesthesia, to make that uh, a procedure, uh, say, simple cannulation, a possibility. So uh, the first expression, as you asked, I think it is quite scary if people are self-administering. What do you think? Like, would if you find someone with an implant, would they be allowed to use an MRI machine? So how does that work? So as I said, because there are no particular guidelines. So even if you go to a diagnostic center where there is MRI CT scan and uh, you talk to them, you tell them that, okay, I have an RFID implant. Their first reaction would be, from the grounds of rejection, you know, we can't do it. You know, MRI is a very sensitive machine, not just from the cost point of view, which lands in crores and crores of money, but also from the safety point of view. So they'll have obvious doubts, even if they want to help you, they'll think, what if this gets magnetized or heated? Because we, I, I'm not sure what material they use to uh, make these devices. If it gets magnetized, it will get heated. You know, it can penetrate deeper into the body. It can uh, damage your ne neurovascular bundles, nerves and vessels. You know, if it is if it is magnetized enough, it might get attracted and pulled by the machine, rupturing your entire skin. But what scares me most in particular is that, let's say someone has injected it and now they want to remove it. So assume a scenario that a patient comes with an RFID implant and he says for some reason he wants to get it removed. Would you attend it as a doctor? Like, is there any legal complications around it? Or what would you do in that case? I'm practicing in New Delhi. I've been practicing for a while. And if somebody comes to me with such kind of a complication, as a doctor, no legal uh, 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 statute or any any law stops me from helping the patient if the patient want to wants to reverse that situation. Right. So you see a lot of cases of foreign body, uh, you know, insertion, uh, especially in elementary canal. Uh, people have they meet accidents, you know, they they sometimes they are experimenting with certain things. If they come, we will do it. We'll do it with the most septic precautionary me measures. And I guess we'll be able to do it unless that thing is broken inside. And then we need to salvage the tissue. Probably sometimes it would lead into amputation. And oh. if you're in inserting. Yeah, of course. So, Vishal, I just want to reverse this situation. Let's say instead of removing it, someone comes in with a syringe and an RFID tag and asks you if you can help to get it inserted in their body. Like instead of doing it as a DIY procedure, they are really enthusiastic and <clears throat> they want to know if a medical professional can aid in it. So what would be your answer for that scenario? As a, as a doctor, I would have to ask why. Why do you want to do this? Like, is, are the benefits, you know, surpassing uh, the uh, injuries or the risks associated with it? So, Ashwin, if you come to me with that same thing, I would, uh, like, you are the patient who has come, you know, you are the enthusiast, cyborg enthusiast, you come to me and I ask you, why do you want to do it? So, that will be the first question. 
even if i get convinced i'll not do it i i don't buy it i mean i'm not convinced enough that you you put a foreign body in your own uh, uh, like soft tissue just to get these things done so absolutely not okay there you have it i believe this video answers all the questions that you might have had about rfid implants but now what do you think Will you be ready to have an implant? Let us know in the comment section. Also, special thanks to Vishal and Mithun for taking their time to take part in this video. You can check out a complete conversation. I have linked that in this video description. That being said, this is Ashwin signing off. Have a good day. Bye-bye.